<laughs> Hi everyone. Hello. I'm here with Maximilian Haver. Hello. Thanks for being with me today, Max. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah. yeah. So I, I wanted to do this video to share with you guys something that actually Max taught me mm -hmm. a long time ago when I first met him. And this uh, learning have from him has been tremendously helpful in my experience of growth and my experience of um, learning how to navigate life and interpersonal relationships and I mean I was pretty decent before but this is taking it up an another level mm. so I'm going to have Max share about energetic reaching mm. and how if we don't do it so many problems are solved <laughs> I know it sounds simple but it really is very powerful so go ahead Max All right. so what is energetic reaching that's when we extend our energy out of center to try and connect with something or, or attain something, right? So basically that function underlies all the, you know, the principles of, of navigating, you know, in a very powerful manner. Yes. So if you're extending to the future or the past, you're not being present in this now moment, right? If you're, so that's a way of extending, reaching your energy. If you're extending to, uh, you know, someone you're wanting to be with, you're extending out of center, you're reaching into their energy. Yeah. And, and so that's another way of like, that can lead into vampirism, that can lead into codependency, right? So again, it underlies the same function, which is reaching. If you're reaching for something you want and you don't get it, then you can be disappointed, you can feel lack, you can feel disempowered because you didn't manifest it, you can go into all these things. Again, the same function underlies it. Your energy was reaching for it. And so it's, it's basically underlies every single lesson or mastery in this universe in that if yeah. you don't reach, then you simply forego the functions of things that would lead to disappointment and rejection and all these things because you weren't expecting those things in the first place. Right? What would you say the opposite of energetic reaching is? The opposite? Yeah. Like being content, being centered. Yeah, well, and see, that's, why, that's why I phrase it in the opposite way is because there's such a subconscious patterning in almost everything that occurs in this universe yeah. around it that I say not doing it to be aware that you are doing it, right? Um, the opposite would simply be, you know, before you reach. I, I mean, how, how, would I, how would I phrase that, right? Um, well, I would say it's a being, being centered in your yes. own energy. Yes. Um, you know, being content and, and grateful for what you have. Yeah. Um, yeah. Knowing that you're enough mm -hmm. in your own energy. That's a big issue in relationships. Uh, subconsciously, people don't think they're enough, and so they reach to the other person yeah, the for validation or whatever. Pop popular phrase around that is, you complete me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. So that illustrates very, very directly how you're extending to someone's energy and leaning on them to yeah. fill certain spots that you have not addressed. Yeah. So that's that's a common phrase yeah. that people use. Yeah, that, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, no one needs anyone to complete them. Right. We're, we're complete in and of ourselves. You, you show up complete, and what you share is in excess. Right? Yeah. So. Can I share a story from early on in our relationship? Sure. Oh, so we weren't together that long at all. We weren't really even together. <laughs> and um, I think maybe you were not quite sure whether or not you wanted to move forward or like actually be in a relationship or hang out with me more. And so I just got this sense that you needed some space. And so um, what I did was I said, okay, I, you know, you just take some time to yourself. If you want to hang out again, you know how to reach me. And I just, I let you, you know, do whatever you needed to do and that was for me number one a big mastery because I was still not a master of not energetic reaching at that point <laughs> but it gave that space and that freedom for me to be centered and for you to be in your energy how you wanted to be well and that also served as the foundation of what we share that's right 
is that we always let each other be free. That's right. And so, you know, I, I have no expectations of you. Yeah. We just... It's true, you guys. He really doesn't. It's amazing. Just share. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> I think that's what makes our relationship successful. And I use our relationship as an example because it is a beautiful, in my opinion, a beautiful relationship where we give each other space. We're not clinging to each other's energies. Mm -hmm. um, he's he's never trying to get something from me. I'm not trying to get something from him. Yeah. Yeah, and and so that expectation in a relationship actually people do comment on it, but they don't realize what's happened. Mm -hmm. What how a dynamic sometimes shifts. Um, this often occurs when people get married and then there's expectation of a marriage and then there's yeah. this attachment and structure where it's an inconvenience to leave. And so it's it's a formal declaration of reaching is what you're doing. <laughs> and you just, you know, some people manage fine with that because, you know, they're agreeing in that. And, and still, a lot of times they have issues come up because there is that expectation, that attachment, that structure, that rigidity of holding on to one another. Mm -hmm. and, and that even goes into people that, you know, they go from, say, friends with benefits into a relationship, and the relationship comes with more expectations, right. which then they're like, well, I liked it, how things were before. And so that's a very <laughs> direct illustration of how that reaching plays out. And then, you know, so you'll see people go, so certain people go through a cycle of getting, enjoying the beginning of the relationship and then getting very uncomfortable as more and more energy is being reached for and they feel yeah. compressed and, and trapped. And, they form, right. you know, we're human, we form these attachments, yeah. but there's a difference between, you know, loving someone and appreciating them and clinging to them. Yeah. And Which, not letting them go or not letting them make their choices. Right. And so that plays into honoring the other person right. in each right. each moment for their choices right. and where they're at, what they're experiencing, what they're expressing, and then also trusting. Trusting them. Yeah. To be on to be on their path, to be free, trusting yeah. yourself. And and again, what underlies that is not reaching. <laughs> Because if you're if you're trusting them, you're not you're not reaching for all those things. If you're honoring them, you're not reaching and trying to fix, you yeah. know. And so it, it really does take a lot of being centered within your own energy, right. being okay with yourself, loving yourself, honoring your own energy, and not being affected by the other person's energy, but also not needing mm -hmm. someone else to tell you, or, you know, to validate you or to to give you something that you think you need from them. Yeah. And some people have an issue with a lot of things around validation. That's a very common one. Like, am I making the right choice? Mm -hmm. Am I doing the right thing? Is, you know. And so with that, it, go, it again comes back to reaching because you're extending out of center someone to affirm your position or choice and then you're also not trusting yourself, yourself yeah. in your own choices yeah. <laughs> so it, it again reaches it, the reaching is the underlying sort of function so that's why it's the crazy number one. making basically <laughs> I, I would I, I don't know if I'd say a hundred percent but at least 80 percent of everything that occurs in this universe comes back to not reaching if if you you know yeah. want to move through it masterfully and not get caught into yeah. different cycles of you know having to I mean, rebalance you, energy you think about yeah. wars on this planet even galactic wars like all of that comes back to reaching yeah that's re why we say it's the number one lesson of this universe because it's not just a planetary thing reaching for for land reaching for homogenized ideas reaching <laughs> for you know the minerals on this planet yeah reach, it's it's <laughs> all it, it all comes back to the same thing and, and, yeah, go ahead. and so I think what can be tricky is people that are used to it, you know, most people. Default mode. How do you actually navigate when you're not reaching? Because that can be like, you know, what, how, oh. right, because there's this like, people use that function of judgment to, to delineate I value. I would like to answer that question. Value of choices and then, and then it comes, you know, so how do you do it without that, right? 
and follow your own heart. Yeah. <laughs> right. You so, follow your own guidance and your own wisdom. So, I say it like this: you can, you can give with grace and gratitude. You can receive with grace and gratitude, and you can ask with grace and gratitude. Beautiful. But don't reach. <laughs> right, and that will, you know. So that's where you offer to share with others, right? Yeah. So it's an open offer, and they either meet you or they don't. And you can have your, your self-expression, and they'll either receive it or, or react, however, yeah. but not to give your power away, which is another form of reaching, right? Because right. you're, you know, extending your energy. Um, and then also to... This is, this is a nuance that not too many people talk about, but moving towards what resonates from center. Mm -hmm. And so... It, there's there's a way of, of moving forward and navigating, not just being still and, and stagnant and in, in isolation, but actually moving to fulfill what resonates with your heart and soul. Right. So so moving from center, being present in each moment, and and so that's that's probably the probably the most tricky is because you want the thing that resonates now, and there's this <laughs> linearity that you have to navigate. Patience. Right, and so <laughs> there's a very fine dance of staying centered and moving forward yeah. towards what you, you resonate with experiencing. Well. <laughs> what that's that's probably that's why a lot of the Buddhists practice foregoing even desires or resonances because it is such a challenging mastery to not reach while moving towards. So so they <laughs> threw the baby up with with the bath with bath the bath water. water. <laughs> Um. <laughs> well, I like that you mentioned asking, you know, ask, asking yeah. for what you want. Um, and there's a way to do it. And you can tell when someone's asking for something from you and they have an absolute attachment to getting it from you. And you can tell when someone's asking without attachment. Mm -hmm. So how do you ask for something from somebody else, from the universe, whatever, without energetic reaching? Mm -hmm. It is that patience, mm -hmm. that it'll happen when it's aligned and when the time is right and knowing that you're worthy and deserving of it and just staying in that that mm -hmm. centered space with what you're asking for and not rushing mm -hmm. towards it not reaching towards it for sure mm -hmm. but staying staying centered with it and and also like if you're asking something from a specific person understand that the important part of the equation is the asking it may or may not come from that person. It may end up coming from somewhere else or someone else. And so when you're a master of not reaching, you just allow it to show up however it's meant to show up. And there's no, you know, there's no attachment to how it shows up or who it comes from or, you know, all those things. Yeah. And people can, in some manner, sense, you know, people that are clingy, people that are needy, yeah. people that are expecting something in return you know so there's this sense of of others reaching mm -hmm. in, a, in a vague you know people generally have some awareness just not necessarily the mechanics right. of it so and i like also how you mentioned at the beginning that energetic reaching also has to do with you know trying to get something in the future or mm -hmm. you know clinging on to the past yeah. Uh, when you're not reaching, you're just centered in the now. You're just here in the now moment. Yeah, and that goes back to how to heal from traumas, not wallowing in it, being mm -hmm. present and feeling what you feel and moving through it in the present moment, letting go of drama, not reaching, you know, it, it's not reaching, not reaching, not reaching. There's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's all these subtle layers to the uh, not reaching. Yeah. Like what will have you not reach is healing your inner child, healing your cellular trauma, you yeah. know. <laughs> and so, and that comes into an interesting nuance of having the elements of past and future and present all in the present, right? So an idea of healing, right? Because if you're in the present moment, you're not currently experiencing a trauma, even though there may still be cellular memory to heal about it. So there is a component of past and future in the present without having to extend your energy. So that's another nuance about that. That's, um, that's yeah. pretty deep. Well, thanks. <laughs> 
So are you saying, if you have trauma that you need to heal, mm -hmm. not going back into the past and reliving it, mm -hmm. but staying in the present and working with what shows up? Right. You can, I mean, you can go into the story to connect with it, to bring it to your awareness, to mm -hmm. surface it. Mm -hmm. But to be present with what you're feeling right now mm -hmm. and to be empowered, you know, with where you're, you know, whatever safe space you're in to reflect on this yeah. and then to move through and heal it instead of people will stay in that energy and wallow right. and then they'll replay it and relive it. And, and it becomes a loop instead of becoming something that That's you're clearing thing. through. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, so you can touch on it to create that movement, that connection. But again, it's if there is that to be connected with, then there is an element that is present in this moment, yeah. which is you know cellular memory or, yeah. or otherwise. No, that's good. Do you guys have any questions? Does is this making sense? Type in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> If you wish. If you wish. There's no attachment. <laughs> so yeah, I do I do say those things because that's that's part of the practice. I say if you wish, I say it's of the moment. I <laughs> all the time he I, says that. I say no expectations. You know, these are just phrases recalling that same notion of yeah. not reaching. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's a master. He has taught me many things. Well, thank you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> well, I'm not seeing any questions or comments, so we'll probably say goodbye. Yeah. Uh, Unless you have something else to say. Uh, are there more examples? Shame and pride. Okay, go for it. So reaching to the past of what you've done elevates your value above what you're currently expressing. So that's convoluting. What you're currently expressing in your experience is you're honoring that energy. But when you try and add what you've done to the past on top of it to say you're of a higher value than what you're currently expressing, that's pride. And when you reach to say that you're of a lower value, that's shame. So it's an extension of reaching to the past mm -hmm. to say, because I've done this or because I've done that, I'm either worth more or worth less, instead of honoring just what you're currently expressing. So, so I can stay more humble by not reaching right. into my past. Right, because in a way, you know you're you're trying to even i mean it depends on how how you look at the energy of humbleness even shame can be a form of of not being humble because you're saying i'm different i'm i'm special in a way that others aren't and in that way i'm <laughs> worth less even though it's an inverted so this is where my mind goes because i'm an entrepreneur right yeah. in marketing you're taught you draw upon your past experiences you draw upon your stories of what you've accomplished, what you've come through, and you share that in your marketing so people can, you know, know who you are and what you've done and mm -hmm. why you're the right person to help them. Mm -hmm. So what, <laughs> what, what have you to say about that? And yes, Carl, I see your question. Well, your example of your last retreat, what did you do? You stood in your current expression. You honored what you felt in that moment. You sent out that call. You put out that message, and that was of that moment. It wasn't about your past. It wasn't about this huh. or that. Yeah, you're right. It was your current expression. It's what you felt in that moment. It's what resonated. And people connect with that because it's genuine, because it's, it's that resonance, it's that flow, it's that truth. And it's not reliving the past. <laughs> I'm having this sort of aha right now because you're totally right. I really didn't talk much about why I'm the person to facilitate your retreat. It's like you either resonate with what I'm putting out there or not. Yeah. And so it, it allows it to break That's up good. all those old patterns because yeah. you're not extending back into yeah. the story or I had to do this or, you know, like it's not... You're not selling the story. You're just saying, connect with me in this moment genuinely yeah. and, you know, resonate and receive if that's, that's yeah. what... Yeah. Here I am. This is what I got. Yes. Huh. And, and to bring through... I didn't even through, realize I did that. <laughs> to bring through more of that, that fuller expression is, you know, more people can connect and resonate with that because there is a, an expansive energy when it is more of your essence coming through in that way. Love it. Yes. Thank you. By the way, before I forget, our next retreat is open. Registration's open for November 8th through November 11th. So we're going to get that 1111 portal energy, which is going to be amazing. If you go to creationtemple.com slash retreat, 
you can register there. It's going to be in Sedona again. Take advantage of this giant quartz crystal that we live on. <laughs> okay, so Carl wants to know how does someone heal their inner child after trauma? Mm. Um, Carl, I'd love to share with you what I've done. Uh, when I had my most significant inner child healing, I took little Susie, she was about two years old, so I identified how old my wounded inner child was, and I took her in my arms and I just held her. And I looked into her eyes, you know, all metaphorically of course, I, I looked into her eyes and I just made her promise that I would never abandon her, that I would look after her, I would take care of her, I would answer any questions she had, I would be there for her if she needed to cry or express something. I just, I really connected with her and promised just to show up whenever she needed me. And then for a couple of months, I just carried her with me. It was like she was on my chest, you know, in one of those little carriers, but you know, again, all metaphorically. <laughs> and I would just look down at her from time to time and be like, hey, little Susie, anything you need? How are you feeling today? What's going on? Are you happy? Are you sad? What can I do for you? I'm here for you. And I just kept doing that. And it was very powerful for me um, to make that promise to show up and to not abandon her. I promised I would never abandon her again. And that was a pivotal turning point uh, when I was able to, to make that promise and keep it and, you know, yeah. not abandon her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just thought of another one. Um that might come up with the, all this sure. because there is lots of nuances, right? It yeah. all comes back to this energetic reaching thing. Yeah. But um, the some people will project what they want and sweep everything under the rug and say, "I'm in the present moment, so all the other stuff doesn't matter." Right. 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 And so the nuance is still honoring any any energies that haven't been completed or cleared which are present in this moment even though you might compartmentalize them yeah. or throw them under a rug yeah that doesn't mean that they're they're gone unless you've truly released and cleared it which i'm sure there are some people that can genuinely release in that way but most people have more of a process so yeah very few people yeah. can just sit inside and say okay i'm done with that i'm being present now yeah there's, there's usually something else that needs to be healed. Yeah. Well, and when it's truly complete, and it, if it does come up, then it will be a different engagement. You're like, oh, well, I've already moved through that. Yeah. And it doesn't have the trigger. It doesn't have the pull. Yeah. And Here's just, how you know you've moved through it. Yeah. If a, if a situation comes to trigger you, and in the past it would have triggered you, and you remain neutral during that situation, that means you're, you're complete. Yeah. But if you're triggered, that means you still have something to work through. Yeah. yeah. So. Many, Beautiful. many nuances. And it, I mean, you know, there's they go on and on and on. laundry lists of, of <laughs> all sorts of different directions in which there's energetic reaching patterns yeah. for a lot of people. And so eventually, as you become more and more aware of yourself and all these patterns, You'll see how it comes back to letting go, coming back to center, yeah. feeling your essence, trusting yourself. And it's, you know, it's very simple, but the complexity is everything that you're navigating with that. Yeah. So. Thank you, Carl. I'm, I'm, thank you for receiving. And um, you can always hire a practitioner to help you with, you know, inner child healing, too. That is, that's a thing. Yes. <laughs> so don't be afraid to reach out and hire someone and get some help if you know if, if you need it well this has been amazing I, I really appreciate your insight on this it's been tremendously valuable and it you know energetic reaching shows up a lot in relationships mm -hmm. and we can really heal a lot of relationships when we stop reaching mm -hmm. we can transform our relationships when we stop reaching I mean just everything changes when you stop reaching everything changes but in order to do it, you do need to heal yourself. You do need to recognize how beautiful and amazing and powerful and wonderful and worthy you are right. and stay centered in your own energy. And all of this is practice and mastery. It's not something that will happen overnight. And you can take back your power. You can take back your, your essence and your energy because you were reaching and you're giving it away. Yeah. So it's in both directions, yeah. trying to take and trying to give. Yeah. Right? Those are both forms of reaching.
awesome. Well, if you like talking with us and hanging out in our energy, consider joining us November 8th through the 11th here in Sedona for our next retreat. It's called Codes of Creation. It's going to be a really powerful retreat, and I know that uh, my guides and what's going to be happening for me until that time, they're really going to have me step up with my own creations because that's how it works if I'm going to facilitate from a place of integrity. So it'll be interesting to see what happens between now and then. And create beautiful things. Beautiful, amazing things. Yes. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it while being grateful for what's happening in this now. Moment. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Much love you guys. Mwah. <laughs>